So we're going to talk about how to determine and calculate the surface area of a penny in order to get the thickness of copper present in a penny. So as you can see in the pictures here, your penny is pretty much a cylinder. A cylinder that has two circular faces, right? You have uh, the front part and the back part of the penny. And each one of these faces is pretty much represented by a circle. The area of the faces is, simply put, the area of a circle. In other words, uh, pi r square. Um, but since you have two faces, right, the front face and the backwards face, you actually have twice pi r square as far as the area of the faces of the penny go, right? So don't confuse this with the circumference, it looks very similar, but this is twice uh, both faces in terms of the area. So it's pi r squared times 2. Now, what you usually are giving here is the diameter of the penny, and the diameter is twice the radius. So if we solve for the radius, what we're going to get is diameter divided by 2. So we substitute that for radius, and then what I do is distribute the square to both the diameter and the one half, which ends up giving you 2 pi d squared divided by 4. Now 2 divided by 4 ultimately simplifies to pi uh, diameter squared divided by 2. Now this is the total area of both faces, front and back, uh, for the penny. Now what's left to be done is to determine the area around the height of the penny. And if you think about it, if you were to take that penny, um, make a cut and spread it out, simply put, what you will get will be a rectangular shape. Now the rectangular shape, the height is still the height of the penny, but the actual length of the rectangle is nothing more than the circumference of the penny, because after all, you got that rectangle by cutting the, you know, the circumference of the penny itself. So. Uh, this length is equal to 2 pi r. Now, <clears throat> altogether, the area of this rectangular segment is 2 pi r times the height. But I'm going to once again substitute for the radius half of the diameter. And as you can see here, you have 2 divided by 2, which is the same thing as just 1. So the circumference is pi times the diameter. And in order to get the final area of this rectangular, segment you multiply by the height so you have basically length you know times height equaling the area of the rectangle so now we have pi dh representing the area of um, of the rectangular segment of the penny now to give you a more concrete example these are the questions we're going to use for calculating the total surface area of the penny and right here i'm giving you a hypothetical um, picture of the penny for which we've measured a diameter of 1.76 centimeters and a height of 0.26 centimeters. Also, I am providing you with the mass of copper which is found experimentally using the spectrometer. Um, this is something you will have to calculate based on the absorbance data that you have in the lab. But for now, I just completely bypass all of it and just went straight to the result which is the 0.065 grams of copper. And we also know that the density of copper is 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, so what we're going to do first is calculate the total surface area of the penny, which once again is pi d squared over 2 plus pi dh. Okay, so you have to do is input the diameter uh, value for the penny into the formulas and also enter the height of the penny. The only caveat is that if the measurements were done in millimeters or any other unit other than centimeters, you have to change all of the lengths to centimeters. In the example here, everything is in centimeters, so we're you know, ready to basically proceed forward. So we multiply 1.76 by pi. Well, first we square 1.76, then we multiply by pi and divide by two. That gives us the area of the two faces of the penny. And to that we add pi dh, right? So for the diameter we have 1.76, the height we have 0.26 centimeters. And at this point, you carry on the multiplication um, 
for each segment and at the end you add them together and you should end up finding out that the surface area here is 2.0064 pi or in other words 6.303 square centimeters right so that's basically multiplying pi by 2.0064 all right now having this total surface area of the penny uh, what we also need to calculate is the volume of copper present in the entire penny and for that we use the mass. So here's where the mass will come into play. And once again, this mass, you don't, you don't have the mass given to you. You're going to have to find it experimentally using the absorbance data. But in order to change the volume, this is where we use the density of copper. So we divide the mass of the copper by its density. The grams cancel out and you end up with units of cubic centimeters with a total volume value of 0 0.00725. All right, finally, to actually get the thickness of copper, all you have to do is divide the volume of copper by the total surface area of copper. And mind you, this is not the volume of the penny and this is not the surface, um, this is, well, it is the surface area of the penny for sure, but the volume is not the volume of the penny. So that's usually where the confusion comes in here. Uh, the volume of the copper is what we calculated right here based on the mass of copper. So we divide 0 0.00725 cubic centimeters by 6.303 square centimeters. Um, the square centimeters cancel out completely, leaving you behind only regular centimeters. And the actual volumes are being 0 0.00115 centimeters, uh, which is actually you know, relatively small. But this will be the calculation that you have to perform in the lab. Um, hopefully this helps you out with the you know, actual post lab. All right, well, that's it for now. Good luck.